Hi everyone, this is Hoaxmith with Nuix with a short video on detecting and triaging data theft using Nuix Adaptive Security. So in the demo scenario here, we're going to start with an alert, which is indicating that uh, someone has uh, sent data outside our enterprise uh, during off hours or after business hours. And so we have um, an alert to a possible data theft, and we want to answer some questions about that in order to determine whether or not this is something significant or it's just um, sort of a false alarm. So to do that, we're going to answer five questions in the context of our triage here. And the first thing we want to know is actually who has sent the information out. We'd also like to know what system they sent it to or what um, remote IP address uh, the data was passed out to, what person they sent it to, uh, the information that they sent, so if we could get some sense as to what the files were that were that were um, sent, and then why the information uh, was sent outside the enterprise. So we'd like to um, make a hypothesis or take a guess at possibly why this event occurred. So we can do all that using adaptive security, using event data here, but we're going to start with um, a alert, and the alert just says um, that we had possible data exfiltration during off hours. And we've used the adaptive logic engine here to simply alert us when um, the time of day is outside a prescribed set of working hours and the amount of data that was sent over a network connection exceeded um, a limit that we specified, in this case, uh, 250K. And the IP address, the destination IP address, was not within our home network. And we had specified um, some IP ranges or net masks that correspond to our uh, internal network. And we don't want alerts if um, data is sent to those addresses, only if it's sent outside. So to um, triage this, we can just right click on the alert in the adaptive console here. And this gives us a range of options to do things like um, collect uh, forensic image from the endpoint or collect specific files, to run commands, to collect a screenshot um, of the endpoint to doing things um, perhaps more significant like uh, network isolating the machine, uh, killing a process, viewing the file system, um, and taking a more detailed look at the endpoint, and so on. But in this case, what we want to do is answer our five triage questions. So to begin with, we're going to figure out uh, what the destination systems were and who the user was. So I'll right-click and select Network Event here. And the first thing that will show me is that there have been um, several different alerts, five different alerts, uh, from the same uh, Outlook process on the same machine uh, around the same time. But um, to drill into our question, we'll go over to the Network tab here, and that's going to show us each time Outlook has made a uh, either an inbound or outbound network connection and the remote address that was connected to. It's also going to show us the username of each of these connections. So right off the bat here, we can answer our first question, which is who sent the information, and it's our, our user R. Lothbrook, uh, from hostname dione.g4l.com. So we'd like to know a bit more about this remote address and to know which uh, remote addresses uh, data was sent to. So to get that, I can just group all my events by remote address and see these two. And then um, to get a sense of like what these uh, IP addresses correspond to, if there's a network actually that they're reaching out to or an organization that we can tie them to, we can pivot from our network events over into DNS events. And that's going to create a query for this particular process, outlook.exe, or running under PID uh, 10424 on this endpoint. And what this reveals is that um, several uh, DNS queries were made to gmail.com and returned the IP address 74.125.192.109. So now we've been able to tie our destination IP address to an actual service here. Gmail. So let's go back and um, consider our next question, which is um, what information was actually being sent? So again, we can use the pivot function in Adaptive and look for file system events um, corresponding to or related to this uh, network connection. So if we go into Events, Files, and actually I'm going to select an earlier event in the chain here. Now we can see all of the file system uh, writes, renames, or deletes performed by the Outlook process here. Again, you can see we're filtering down to 
the Outlook process running under 10424. Here's all these Outlook events where Outlook is writing files. And this should give us some insight into what information was actually uh, being uh, transmitted. So I've added in a column here to indicate whether each event is a delete, rename, delight, or uh, rename or write. And then I'll filter down to my write events. Uh, and so now we can see that there's a number of temp files here and also some interesting, uh, interesting files that appear to pertain to uh, a technology called graphene. A number of these files reference graphene. Uh, others appear to be technical data that um, might be of interest or might be part of um, a collection of research, of sensitive research. Um, I'd like to make a bit more sense out of this by examining the file paths that these were written to. So that data is all, all um, present here under the file path column. And we can clean up the display a little bit here just by dragging out and getting rid of some of the columns that I don't care about at the moment. Um, what you can see is that there's a whole set of files here that are written into a temporary directory um, created by Outlook. And that's um, ind indicative of the user uh, attaching these files to an email. And so now we see that um, you can see all these file names here related to the sensitive research that the user was, um, was uh, sending or attaching to his Outlook email to send out. So the next question we'd like to ask is, uh, what person was this information being sent to? And um, one of the more powerful ways to get insight into this is using keystroke data. So in this case, we're forwarding uh, keystroke information back. And if we go into in events keystrokes, we can begin to examine uh, keystroke activity around the time of this event. And uh, the way keystroke data is displayed in adaptive security, we will see a process name. Um, and at the, in this display, it's missing, but um, uh, generally we'll see the process name, uh, the username, and then a active window title that was open when the keystrokes were entered and the keystrokes themselves. So um, one of the things that we can immediately see here is that when there was an active window title of untitled message, in other words, uh, a new empty message was open in Outlook, uh, the user typed in an email address, Riddle of Steel, um, at, at uh, more stuff, and this is actually showing that actually he was entering, uh, had entered this part of the email address and then this into the subject line. And if we keep going, going down here, we can see that he entered Riddle of Steel at hotmail.com. Uh, also under a, an untitled message window. And then as we continue to look at the keystroke data, we can see some other interesting things here um, around uh, job searches uh, on the ladders. And we might at this point say, okay, uh, it's worth to expand our scope a bit and see, um, take a look a bit further back uh, in history to see if there's any other information um, in the keystroke data that could reveal something about the uh, end user's motive for sending information back. And what we see is that there's a history of um, various kinds of uh, job search activity, looking for engineering um, positions, visiting the ladders, uh, visiting uh, indeed.com, etc. So um, hopefully this gives you a sense of what is possible, um, the art of the possible in adaptive security when combining uh, key log data, file system information, namespace queries, network, uh, process events, all into one rapid um, triage uh, activity. Now, one other thing I wanted to show um, while I have uh, your attention on this issue of data exfiltration is around um, screenshotting. So if we examine this alert here, we can see that a user visited a file sharing site, and so we've taken screenshots for 20 seconds. This gives us an ability to sort of close the gap between um, the network event, which will show that um, a certain amount of data was passed out, and browsing, uh, browsing event data, which will show us that the jump share site was visited, but it's very difficult to figure out exactly what information was posted to the job sharing or to the data sharing site or file sharing site. So that's where screenshotting can be very useful here. And if I go over into my screenshot data that happened around the time of this alert, uh, we can see that um, as soon as the user actually hit the jump share site, we began to take screenshots. And what we're seeing right here, right here is the user's preparing to upload uh, file to jump share. 
And as we click through our um, uh, set of screenshots, we can see that a file called complex structuring was uh, what the user dropped onto JumpShare. And uh, as I click down here, we can just see um, the further sort of confirmation of that or what was on the user screen around that time. But this um, right here tells us all we need to know, which is that this file was posted to our JumpShare site. And this would, of course, be very useful um, if it was necessary to confront um, a staff member about uh, behavior that um, was of concern. So hopefully um, you've gotten a sense of what we were able to do. I'll just take a quick review here uh, into um, you know, how, we, how we went through this process. We started with detecting our um, data theft during off hours. Then we went through and asked a series of questions about that event uh, on the fly. And the answers we got were, um, you know, the person sending out the data was R. Lothbrook from dione.g4l.com. We found two IP addresses corresponding to Gmail that was um, as the destinations for the information. The person that the information was sent to was the email address riddleofsteel at hotmail.com. We found the files that they were sending were multiple files related to the graphene technology. And then finally, we took a guess at why they sent it by looking at the keystroke data to determine that they had been looking for jobs and they were likely seeking to improve their prospects during a job search.